I'm getting back to my mating nooks here. There's a few tweaks I need to make. I need to make some covers, top covers. I need to put the bottoms on. I need to cut the bottoms. I need to drill the entrance holes, things like that. One of the things I have to do is I need to flush the dividers with the boxes. In cutting all this material and gluing it all together, there's so many different pieces that I, I tried my best to get it all flush. And they're, they're mostly flush on the bottom is where I was working from as a, as a reference. But the tops, even the bottoms are not flush exactly. The tops are not flush. So there absolutely can't be anything protruding because the covers and the bottoms need to go on. Sometimes you need to just approach things in an old school way. I've got a good old number six Stanley planer here. And that's just really doing the trick. It's a nice long one so it's making a nice flat surface and uh, so we're just going to pare away at these kind of show you how this is going this is the bottom of this one I've actually just trimmed the top this lid looks pretty good but it could be a little smoother there's some glue here so I'll take the old Stanley and just run this across here a few times this is pushed right down these aren't really even attached in there by much, these small dividers. So that's looking really good. planing plywood. That's the kind of thing that gives some woodworkers nightmares. But whatever. Yeah, that's nice. That's really good. It's not that hard to do. It doesn't take that long. And it does a nice job. I don't use any electricity. And I don't create any dust. So what could be better? So these, like I said, these dividers aren't really glued down by much. You need to make sure they're flush at the bottom.
recently started drinking this bubbly stuff. I think it's kind of nice. It's a sparkling water with a little bit of flavor. If you're expecting it to be a soda pop, you'll be dis disappointed because that's not what it is. More than what it is, I like what it isn't. And uh, what it isn't is something that contains sugar or artificial sweeteners. There's nothing in this. The flavors are subtle and they are natural flavors. Uh, this one's an orange one. They have a whole bunch of flavors. The strawberry one is actually my favorite. In almost all the flavors you can discern the soda water taste in the drink. The strawberry one, the strawberry flavor seems to go along with the soda water taste so it complements it and so you don't taste the two components as much. <clears throat> but this is orange. This is good too. I like all the flavors. I've tried all of them now I think. So if you haven't tried it Go grab some bubbly and uh, check it out. It's kind of a new product on the market, and uh, I, I I like it. It's Wednesday here in the wood shop. It's Wednesday. Well, it's Wednesday everywhere. I haven't made a video in a while. Nothing dramatic has happened to me. I was in the big city yesterday. Most places were mostly business as usual, but there was always that underlying shift in protocol. I found it a little stressful. I didn't realize that until after I was home. You don't want to be all consumed with the situation. You don't want to be preoccupied. You don't want to be obsessed with it. However, everything you do, you're always thinking of that situation. And you should. Don't touch your face, wash your hands, use sanitizer when is appropriate, etc. Don't stand close to other people, watch for people who might be sick, don't shake hands. <laughs> uh, so you're always thinking about that because it's not, it's not second nature yet. Uh, it might become second nature. If this is the new normal, it might become second nature. But for now, it's a conscious effort. And to me, being in the city, visiting multiple places, dealing with multiple people in different situations, that becomes stressful because it's in the forefront of your mind all the time. Uh, you need to always be aware. You know what might come natural. Scratch my face, which I can do. I'm at home. I've been home for a couple of days. You know, there's no virus here as far as I know. Uh, rub your eyes. Touch your face. Shake somebody's hand. A lot of the fast food restaurants were. Uh, the parking lots were pretty empty pick up and take out only. I was at Costco. Uh, no toilet paper to be seen. Not that I went for toilet paper. Uh, I sure hope the crazy people get enough toilet paper soon so the rest of us when we actually need toilet paper we can actually find toilet paper on the shelf. That's all I can say. But at Costco the one thing, uh, there, there are a few things I noticed. Big lineup at the pharmacy. I'm not really sure why that is. Uh, the one thing that was most notable was the little uh, eating area where they serve their hot dogs and whatnot. You know, I didn't even take notice if that servery thing was open. I think it was. I would have noticed probably if it weren't. But the eating area, all the, those tables are all pushed up in the corner of the, with a rope around them. You couldn't uh, linger. There was no place to sit and eat. So again, trying to keep people from congregating. One of the supply stores I went to they're pretty well locked down you need to phone ahead your order and let them know when you arrive and they'll bring it to the dock and drop it on the dock and walk away but that was weird and you know that wasn't without its own problems for some reason I arrived there I phoned the place twice you know to tell them that I was there to bring my stuff to the dock I couldn't get through I guess the phone lines were all busy I chalked it up to the extroverts stuck at home they got to talk to somebody on the phone all day but uh, but I don't know why that was I tried to make three calls yesterday that didn't go through uh, for apparently the same reason so there's there's definitely extra demand on the phone lines I'm an introvert I'm fine be alone I'm Bert Shavitz I don't know if you know who Bert Shavitz is Bert's bees Bert Shavitz the old hermit old hermit beekeeper 
He seemed like a wonderful individual. I, I, I would love to have uh, met him and, and got to know him a little bit. Difficult to do because I think he was the ultimate introvert. We made a little movie about him after he passed and he said on that movie, the good day is when you don't have to go anywhere and nobody shows up. <laughs> I can't say that I disagree. However, today's another day. I haven't made a video in a while. Not for any good reason other than I don't feel like there's been a whole lot interesting going on in my life. Honey sales have picked up. Uh, and larger sizes too. A lot of pails. In fact, I got an order this morning for about 28 kilograms honey in a pail. That's a nice order. She's going to get a good, uh, a good price, good price on that. You know, you larger orders, of course, you always get better pricing. I've not raised any of my prices, though. I don't really believe in that. That's just opportunism and taking advantage of others. You know, I keep my prices up to where I feel they should be. I'm not a discount store. If you're looking for cheap honey, you've got to go somewhere else. My honey's not cheap. It's not cheap honey and it's not inexpensive either. Been doing lots of honey sales, people phoning, people coming around. And that's another thing, people come around. You know, they know better than to try and shake your hand. They know better they get too close. Um, a lot of them bring cash, which I would really prefer e-transfers. Uh, then I don't have to go to the bank. I don't have to touch anything that they've been touching. I just loaded the cabinet with more honey. We need to keep getting her packed up. I've got a bit of a long supply chain because of how I pack my product. Uh, I like to have it packed uh, by a CFIA approved packer. And uh, then there's transport to packing, transport to back from packing. Before that, there's, you know, I need to liquefy all the honey, make sure it's ready to pack, especially if it's creaming. And then the creaming process takes a couple days. Um, so there's, is the whole process and then labeling. Labeling always takes a bit of time and then there's trying to catch up on my building in the wood shop. I'm still working at these little mating nukes. These little mating nukes here. All I've accomplished really is I've flattened, I took my hand plane and flattened the uh, dividers so that they're reasonably flat. I need to put a plywood bottom on that. That's what I want to do today. I want to cut those bottoms, get them screwed on there. My slow boat from China showed up with my little entrance discs. I like these little discs. There are multiple colors. A bag of them here, multiple colors. So I bought, I don't know, a couple of these bags anyway. And uh, you just drive a screw. I've, I've uh, drilled a hole here in the corner. Just put that little entrance in there, drive a hole, a screw. I know they kind of make it with a little bit of a landing. A little bit of a landing pad. Bees don't need a landing pad, but that's what they make. So they assume that the hole is going to be above like this. But I don't want the hole up where the middle of the brood frame is. I want it down in the corner here. So I'll put that that little sucker on there a lot like that. You can spin them around then for ventilation. Disc, a closed entrance, or a uh, queen excluder kind of a size slot for the workers to get out uh, or just wide open or wide open or you can you know you turn it a little bit and you get one one b sized entrance and two and i drilled three quarter inch holes i should have drilled a one inch hole i thought it was a three quarter on there i drilled these yesterday and these arrived today oh well no big deal some of the little tiny frames made they're kind of nice. I'm, I'm pleased the way they're working out. Go right in there. Into my mating nuke. I can get five of them across, particularly because I've shaved those down to inch and three, uh, inch and a quarter. Inch and three eighths is more of a standard size. Inch and three eighths is not a mandatory size. You should read up on that. There's a lot of information online. So a lot of that information came from the old beekeepers, way back hundred and some years they determined that that brood comb can use down I think the minimum is an inch and a quarter depth uh, you know center to center kind of thing and then of course you know very well that honeycomb can get very wide 
uh, it can go probably two inches wide. So the inch and three eighths that we have settled on as an industry, I think, is just a compromise. Works well for brood. Uh, it also works for honey. Most people that I know stretch their frames out even wider than inch and three eighths, though. So in a mating nuke, we're looking at brood comb. That's why I went inch and a quarter uh, to accommodate five frames and give me space in there to uh, manage manage the hive. I'm going to cut up some plywood and make the bottoms for those. Again, I've got ten of them, ten pieces of plywood. That doesn't sound like rocket science. Hope everybody's having a great day. Uh, stay safe. Stay well. Uh, you know what? Somebody made a good good point the other day in my presence. They said, you know, stay safe because even if you even if you don't you know catch this virus thing, if you have an accident, you break your leg, you cut your finger off, or whatever for whatever reason, get you know knife stuck in your eye or you know whatever might happen, you don't want to have to end up in the hospital because guess what? Hospitals are a bit busy. Leave leave the hospitals to what they need to attend to and don't uh, add to their workload. Stay safe, be careful. Just just take that little bit extra uh, care in what you do. And I think that'll serve you well.
have fun.